the bow. One of the most discussed, worried over, lectured about violin or fiddle subject of all time is the bow hold. Of course, the way you hold the bow can allow you to progress to unheard of levels of virtuosity, or it can hold you back from ever really being able to enjoy your own playing or any place in between. Now, bow hold was something that I was lucky to learn about early, both as a student and later through close observation and emulation of so many great players. So I'm going to pass on some of my thoughts to you about it right here. First, I'd like to show you a little diagram I made up recently, which takes as its inspiration the contractor's triangle. As many of us know, the famous contractor's triangle consists of three factors, each of which make up a side. Fast, cheap, and good. Now the principle is that when you do any building or remodeling on your house or even in your instrument or just about anything, you can have any two of these at one time, but not all three at once. But you can have a nice blend of all three to varying extents according to how you work it out with the contractor. Okay, based on that principle, I present to you the bow grip triangle. Now, before we get into these specifics and how they work, we'll deal with the presumption that this chart begs, a bow grip should, and will anyway, change from moment to moment and for different kinds of styles of music. Not a lot, not radically necessarily. You wouldn't go from this to this. Maybe you would, I don't know, but uh, it wouldn't help. But what is ideal is that there will be some flexibility in your bow hole to change. I've talked to a lot of educators and great players about this and the consensus is that you do a lot of different things with the bow and that your grip should adapt within a range according to what's going on in the music. Okay, your basic bow hold should orbit around this hold. All right, all fingers curved, including the thumb, all right? Back to the bow hold triangle. There is a spectrum encompassing three factors. Pretty obvious. I believe they are flexibility, power, and control. These three factors are always in play and are complementary in the sense that they can fight each other a bit sometimes. Like fast, cheap, and good. Sometimes you have to sacrifice a little flexing for control sacrifice a little control for power. So, so what might happen if we look at this as ongoing interplay of factors, you might be moving around within this range here depending on the piece that you're playing. If you're playing a hard driving bluegrass tune, for instance, <laughs> You might be moving a little bit this way toward power, which will change your grip. If you want to do some really tweaky off the string stuff, right? That might mean you're moving toward control, which is going to lessen your power. The ideal thing is to keep your grip always in a range near the center so you get a nice blend of all the factors but always changing slightly so you're flexible and staying relaxed. Because we just try to keep the same grip all the time, just like maintaining any position for a long time, eventually we'll have a lockup situation and nothing can happen. Anyone who sat on a plane or in front of a computer for six hours and not gotten up knows exactly what I'm talking about here. So what makes flexibility? What makes power? <laughs> Power comes from tilting the hand forward onto the stick. Brr. 
like that, which drives the bow into the string <laughs> thusly. <laughs> you might not want to do it that hard. When we combine it with a faster bow or a smoother motion, we get all kinds of grind. One nice thing about this, if we're doing it right, we get also a little bonus flexibility because of the wrist, right? Because we're tilting a little bit and that tilts the wrist in the direction of flexibility. But because we're pressing down the whole assembly, it's under load so that flex is subject to pressure, which can be harmful and is certainly going to affect our control as well. You can't really use fine finger control to subtly change tone with this unless you're high fits or somebody. Most of us are high fits. If we, fl if we flatten out our hand, we get more control. We spread our fingers wow. out. We get a lot of more control of all kinds of subtle bow movement on and off the string, night short stuff, tone manipulation, and so forth, right? fingers out flattens and locks the wrist even more and we lose a lot of smoothness and flexibility there Ugh. and also to some extent we lose power because if we want power with this grip we're pulling like this <coughs> and that affects the elbow and causes you guessed it pain you know, all through here and here the uh, dreaded carpal tunnel so you're considering these three factors all the time. Control, power, and flexibility. Your basic bow grip involves these important factors. You've got the bent thumb, fingers curved around the bow, very important. Pinky counterbalancing, but not stiff, right? You know, curved, not out like this. The thumb is bent inward, right? It goes into the corner of the frog and the stick like this so we want that flex that the bent thumb will give you you can get a softer piece of foam or a gel thing on your bow something in that corner of the bow and that can be nice it effectively also widens the bow a little bit that's interesting and uh, that will change the feeling of the tip weight Maybe for the better. Maybe not. Fingers around the bow. If you are up like this, you know, and you have to, you, then you're going to have to, or like even like this, you're going to have to start pinching. And then you lose flex, you lose power, and you even lose a lot of control because it's so difficult to lever the bow when you're way out in a hand like this. When we have a lot of meat inside of our hand contacting the bow, right? We gain everything because the increased surface area of contact, which allows us to relax more whenever we're playing and not worry about dropping it or any of the other various fears associated with playing this crazy instrument, like eaten by giant violin dinosaur reptile things. When your fingers are wrapped around the bow, you don't have that. I've never been eaten by a giant violin dinosaur reptile thing and it's, I believe it's because my fingers have been wrapped around the bow. Asterisk. Uh, people tend to crawl up the bow. They choke, choke up the bow uh, when they feel like the tip is too heavy and it's hard to manipulate. They're trying to do often complicated string crossing. Um, Celtic stuff, um, tying a cross. Right? All that kind of stuff. I got these lovely little Celtic triplets, and there's just too much leverage happening at the tip there. They're trying to manipulate the tip. Uh, moving up the bow makes the tip perceptually lighter, easier 
to wave around. Of course, the frog <laughs> becomes this weird counterweight, uh, which to me defeats the purpose a little bit because you're, you know, you're having to move the frog around. And you lose your nice finger contact area that the frog provides. It's this nice contact. These two middle fingers um, really, you know, have a lot of nice contact there on the frog. So, you know, uh, one way to deal with this is to buy a smaller bow. If you like choking up on the bow, buy a smaller bow. Get a three-quarter size or a lighter bow. Uh, or one of those wonderful Baroque bows, uh, which now you can get pretty cheaply. Many people use the Texas grip if you're from Texas, the Missouri grip if you're from Missouri, the uh, Georgia grip if you're from Georgia. But um, the uh, uh, made um, internationally famous by Mark O'Connor, but it's very common grip uh, among fiddle players, American, especially American fiddle players. It's flexible. It works very well. You get a lot of leverage. Uh, there's really not a lot wrong with it, except that you can, again you lose a little bit of lateral control, which can be regained if you have a really large hand. So there's our two little asterisks. And again, you know, this is one of the most worked-over issues in string playing. Everybody, no matter how long they've been playing, is involved in monitoring or evolving, or changing, or thinking about, in some way, their bow hold. It's a constant thing, no matter how far along you are, or how many years you've been playing. I'm hoping that being aware of these three factors will help you in your quest toward comfort and joy. I think there's a song there. With the violin, the fiddle, the cello, or any instrument that uses one of these magic wands.